Welcome on in to another edition of Smart Chat here on YouTube.com. Hope everything's going well for you guys. And I uh, just thought I'd do a video of some of my uh, raw thoughts and I guess slash roadblock predictions. You know, raw thoughts from yesterday, which was December the 12th of 2016. And uh, these thoughts are in no particular order whatsoever. And uh, I welcome your thoughts and your comments uh, down below. Big Cass was at Raw by himself this week after uh, his buddy Enzo Amore. Enzo uh, got the snot kicked out of him by, um, by Rusev last week. And, was going in, he, tried, he was trying to have a little hanky-panky with Lana at her um, at her hotel room, and lo and behold, who didn't see this coming, he was uh, ambushed by Rusev. So now this week, Cass is trying to get vengeance. He's all upset, all upset that his buddy uh, Enzo got snot kicked out of him. The only problem is, is Big Cass was very robotic. If he could possibly show some little bit of emotion, show that you're angry. Don't just state it. Show that you're angry. Talk with some inflection in your voice. I mean, it, it, that's just me anyway. I mean, I just noticed that. You know, I know that, you know, Cass... It's not the greatest promo cutter. You don't want him to have the mic for a long period of time. That's not the greatest thing to do. But still, something simple. You're saying that you're upset. Show some emotion. Show some emotion in your in your voice. It's good to see that finally. A cruiserweight was able to get over. That's exactly what you've seen with uh, gentleman Jack Gallagher, I believe is the name. I mean, I said last week that his ring attire is not really to be desired. He looks like a generic player at w, uh, WWE 2K you know, 16. Generic player, stock player that you got. Ring attire aside I just loved when he basically said he interrupted the match said listen I am going in to interrupt this match in a gentlemanly way said uh, scoundrel next thing you know the crowd in Philly was chanting scoundrel and fucking got over he got over it I mean what that line at the gave him, whether it was a line or it was something he said off the top of his head, got himself over. Can he continue it next week? Uh, we'll see. We'll see, but I like that line. It worked, and if you're Brian Kendrick and um, you're thinking to yourself, at least, you know, Brian Kendrick, let's be honest, Brian Kendrick and Swan and, um, DJ Perkins, that promo that I had there in the back, really uh, did not work. Brian Kendrick, for the most part, you know, he, he knows what his character is. He's there as the veteran hand, tr trying to work with the younger cruiserweights. You know, TJ Perkins, I don't know what he's doing with those glasses. Uh, like, what it, it looks silly. Great point by, um, uh, by, um, Great point by, um, <laughs> shit, the announcer there, um, saying, uh, do you need prescriptions to look that stupid? <laughs> Channeled, uh, years of Bobby the Brain Heenan and, um, Jesse the Body Ventura, those one-liners, um, yeah, and, uh, it, 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 uh, it, he's really coming into his own as an announcer. And it's, 
and I fucking can't remember his name. Shit. <laughs> you know his name. Guy from NXT started NXT, but yeah. Brian Kendrick, these guys like Swan and Perkins are back there. Now, Perkins has a little bit of personality with the dance move. I guess that's why they're keeping the title on him. And I do see him winning at Roadblock. He's going to keep the title. But they must be saying to themselves, man, we're busting our ass week in and week out. And we can't get ourselves over. And this guy, with his silly-looking tights, with a dirty, rotten scoundrel, got, you know, got himself over. Uh, in a matter of seconds. I mean, the cruiserweights, you know, it, it's a working progress, but maybe this is what WWE needs in Gallagher. You know, build, try to build off that momentum next week. Let's see what you could do. You know, TJ Perkins, man. I think I'll turn this guy heel. I, I just don't see it with him. Uh, I don't see it. I mean, uh, I, I supposedly this guy has a, had a following on the indies. But this week, they were in Philadelphia, and he got a splattering of applause. I, I just don't see it with Perkins. Now, I know Perkins, you know, it's, it's funny with the WWE. Certain guys, they will just keep on going with. They won't give up. They will keep on pushing. Perkins is clearly one of these guys. He... You know, probably was brought in by Triple H. And, you know, it's favoritism. Favoritism, you know, in the WWE. And they're going to continue to throw this guy out there, Perkins, until he gets over on TV. But they need to change his... They need, they need to turn him heel. They need to do something that's not working for him. So I see uh, Swan keeping the title, the Cruiserweight title. I see, um, I don't know, uh, Rusev and Cass, as far as World Block, I think the WWE puts a little bit more stock in Cass, you know, for the future. Rusev, uh, I mean, he, he, Rusev, they're up and down with. Rusev it started off as a badass heel. Now he's like a coward heel. Now he's back to being a badass heel. So it, it changes. We can, you know, <laughs> every so often with this guy, with Rusev. Rusev has lost more than he's actually won since he dropped the strap. So uh, I see Cass winning this and, you know, like Enzo interfering or, you know, something to that regards there. Um, We've seen a video package for, um, we've seen a video package for Charlotte and Shasha Banks and, uh, you know, just the way this is going, you already see that the, the, the title is being hot potatoed. You know, they're doing a 30 minute Iron Man match, Iron Woman match rather. I like the video package. But if you were to ask my opinion, what's going to happen, you know, the 30-minute match for Roadblock, I see somehow after the 30 minutes, just to fuck over the fans, 30 minutes, it's tie, they extend uh, the match for another 5 or 10 minutes, and it winds up being a draw. Therefore, Charlotte Flair retaining, keeping... Uh, you know, the title, rather Sasha Banks uh, keeping the title. So I could see that happening. Um, Sasha Banks is the champion, right? Yeah, I think she is. So that's what I see happening with that. Um, you know, New Day continues to hold on. But now the longest reigning tag team champions. And you knew that was coming. Uh, I think pretty much what sealed it is when uh, the demolition uh, pretty much were the first ones in that lawsuit against the WWE. Uh, double, uh, a double FU to demolition because not only they had a fatal three-way uh, twice in the night. So they, they, uh, they fought 
four tag teams, essentially. So it was like a double F you to, to Demolition. But, you know, Demolition... Actually, one of the Demolition members, they tweeted, congratulations. You know, but WWE likes to do this. They like to erase records of people they're not in good terms with. They did that with AJ Lee. No surprise that they did it with Demolition. Um, with the tag belts here. You know, I still see New Day turning heel sooner than later. Um, going up against uh, Enzo and Cass there. So I see that happening. Um, you know, Seth Rollins... Rollins report continuing to um, mount that friction between Jericho and uh, Owens seemed like you had a mini reunion with uh, Jericho and Owens and then you know it fell apart again you know man I, I told you I seen this coming because WWE they really does not certain things they like to, uh, certain things that make real sense are absolutely great. They, for whatever reason, they like to, uh, split up. And, you know, a lot of the polls that I've seen on various social media, a lot of people want to see Jericho and Owens together, but it doesn't look to be in the cards. It doesn't look to be in the cards. I mean, partly I think because Jericho is on shorter term deals now, he... He is coming out with a book. He's going back on tour. So you won't see Jericho around that much longer. But, heck, maybe we'll be surprised when something happens at um, at Roadblock. And Jericho interferes um, and helps uh, Owens uh, defeat Roman Reigns. Um, now, when, when I say that, the part of the reason why I say... I think Owens will continue to hold the belt and defeat Rollins is because if you look at, at it, why wouldn't Rollins be defending his U.S. title? Why is it just Owens defending his belt? Meaning, what's in it for um, Kevin Owens? I think if, um, if Roman Reigns were to win... They would say that uh, Roman Reigns' title was also on the line. That way uh, they could emphasize the possibility of Roman Reigns being a you know, two, uh, two belt holder. So I just don't see it happening. Uh, you have that match between Seth Rollins. You know, Seth Rollins again on Raw hinted, mentioned, dropped Triple H's name wants Triple H. Um, do we see Rollins losing to Jericho this week uh, on Roadblock? I think Jericho does not uh, win. I think he loses. Uh, I think Triple H interferes, but I think he uh, interferes after the match is over uh, just pops up out of the crowd and attacks Rollins so I do I think Triple H will be on Roadblock though I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up on Raw because Raw I think there will be a, a bigger audience for him uh, I think a lot more people will watch Raw they watch Raw than, than the actuality have the network or even will watch the Roadblock pay-per-view uh, last thing real quick, Sami Zayn wants to face Braun Strowman, and Mick Foley saying, it, it think, it, this just part doesn't make sense to me from Raw, he's saying in Mick Foley that Braun, uh, that Sami Zayn is going to get killed, he's going to be destroyed, he's going to be beaten up, he, he doesn't want to see that, storyline wise, so if, if, s- if Braun Strowman is a monster and Sami Zayn can't fight him, uh, what is exactly the difference? Why is it okay to throw Curtis Axel out there? Storyline stupidity as well. 
just because Sami Zayn is able to yell and shows that he has a few, uh, he has balls in him, that means that he could go, he gets the match against Braun Strowman. Why? Talking and yelling still is not going to change the fact that you're going to get killed and destroyed. Storyline-wise, it doesn't make sense. What did Sami Zayn show? How did he show that he could beat Braun Strowman and that his well-being is nothing to be worried about? You know, Braun uh, Strowman will destroy Sami Zayn at Roadblock. Um, but you're going to come out of this match where you're going to say, oh, you know, Sami Zayn has the respect from the WWE Universe, was able to go with Braun Strowman, but I don't see uh, Braun Strowman losing to Sami Zayn at all. Just some of my thoughts from, Rope, uh, from Raw and <laughs> my Rope Block thoughts as my tongue's all twisted. I hope everything is well and I look forward to speaking to you soon.